Hey, what's going on? I'm back today with another metal album review. Before I get started, um, I'd like to show a couple of uh, albums I managed to pick up yesterday at my trip to Encore Records in Kitchener. Um, what I have here is uh, the newest Gorgoroth album, which has a fairly complicated title that I'm not going to try to pronounce. Uh, I was pretty excited to find this. And also, uh, Despel Omega. Yeah, I didn't think this band was too popular, but, uh, you know, they had a couple of the releases there, so I picked up this, uh, also their latest full-length album from 2009. Um, so yeah, I was excited to find these two, and I'd like to review them in the future. Kudos to Encore Records for actually stocking this black metal stuff. Um, pretty much the only store in Kitchener Waterloo that I know of that has, you know, th that sort of music uh, on a regular basis. Now, let's get into the, the actual review here. What I'm reviewing today is Serotonal. Uh, this is their first full-length album that was released last year, um, and it's called Monumental, Songs of Misery and Hope. <clears throat> now, I'm not too familiar with most of the members of this band, but I definitely know who Darren White is, their vocalist. He was the singer, the original singer, mind you, for Anathema, and also did work for The Blood Divine, uh, another band called Dead Men Dream, and also some work for Old Cradle of Filth, like, back in their very early years, in the early 90s. Um, so yeah, he's been around, he's a seasoned veteran of this type of music, particularly doom metal, but, you know, other types of metal as well. Um, and I was very excited about this release, particularly because of his uh, involvement with this band. Uh, something I've been waiting for to hear for a long time, so I was very excited when this came out. Now, what you get here is a list of nine tracks. Uh, you can see them on the back here. We can see them better on the actual case inside. You know, these slip cases are sometimes annoying, but uh, at least this time the backs are different, so it gives you sort of a reason to have a case on it. I don't know. That's not really that important. What's important here is the music. <clears throat> so, in terms of musical influences, what you'll hear here is definitely like a classic doom metal influence. You know, like similar to the old Anathema stuff to some extent. Like, that's definitely one of the influences here, but this music does sound very different as well. Um, what you get in, in addition to that influence is more of a classic hard rock influence and also some more atmospheric elements. Like, for example, um, this band likes to use. Uh, more echoey, not so distorted guitar for the introduction to songs, such as like Wasteland, um, quite a few other ones as well, like Isolated as well. Yep. So there's quite a lot of that um, echoey, you know, almost clean guitar in there to sort of build up the tension, get the song moving before it blasts into the heavier bits. So that's definitely an element that you may not be familiar with if you've listened to the older Darren White material. So it's something new and fresh, and it's a new sort of spin on the doom metal genre. In terms of emotions, uh, doom metal has always been one of the more emotional types of metal, in my opinion, and this is definitely no exception to that rule. Um, but unlike previous doom metal albums, which are all about, you know, doom and depression, this song is, sorry, this album really is about, you know, highs and lows, ups and downs, and it does reflect the title, you know, Songs of Misery and Hope. Um, a good example of this is the track Wasteland, which has typically the depressive lyrics, but the way they present it is actually in a more positive light. So it sets it apart from, you know, maybe older, more classic doom metal releases. <clears throat> Many of the tracks here do have quite a lot of emotional build-up to them, particularly like the title track called Monumental, and also um, Unseen and Isolated. Like those three tracks have a lot of sort of building up, building up, and then sort of letting go. It's it's a good way of presenting an emotional song while keeping it very interesting at the same time. And it works very well here. Um, a couple of the tracks have a more you know, straightforward, you know, hard rock sound to them, like Self-Control Seizure and Wasteland. And those are tracks that you'll find probably more immediately appealing to you just at, on the first listen. Um, and this was an album I enjoyed listening it to it the first time through. But it does grow on you to some extent. <clears throat> now, you get another few bits of, like, um, sort of experimentation in here. Like, the track Hinge is almost like a like a thrash metal inclusion, which sort of sounds out of place a little bit, but, you know, it kind of works. And um, for a first album, this is actually quite well done. You know, it's experimental and it's interesting. You know, there are some points that could have been improved, like, you know, the thrash metal sound they include there is maybe not quite as tuned as the other tracks. But, you know, it's something that 
I like that they threw in there anyway, and maybe it's something they'll work on a little bit in the future. Um, now, the other thing that I noticed on this release is that um, they, there's a few tracks in here that specifically build tension, which may not be quite as appealing as the other songs, particularly um, Now It's Over and uh, the song Chaos Mind. You know, they're definitely appealing. I don't mind them, but they're not quite up to par, in my opinion, with the other tracks on this release. You know, they, they do build tension, and they do have a, a, you know, an immediate appeal as well, but maybe not to the same extent as other tracks here. <clears throat> the other thing I was maybe a little disappointed in with on the first listen was the closing track, Nature Reality. You know, for this type of music, you expect sort of a more epic, you know, conclusion to the to the album, but that song was more of a direct and more kind of balls to the wall kind of uh, closer here. Nothing fl too flashy or fancy, but you know, it's a song that's not bad either. Just uh, just definitely wasn't what I expected. <clears throat> now this album is definitely something that you may not expect if you've listened to doom metal in the past and it is definitely different in a lot of ways so it does take a little bit of getting used to um, in terms of the instrumentation like what the band does very well is um, they have a lot of heavier parts and lighter parts and the instrumentation is very well done in both instances uh, I can't really complain about any aspect of the instrumentation whatsoever the, the bass is audible the guitar riffs are well written they're interesting the drumming has good fills, and it actually does the lighter parts very well as well, um, with some good hi-hat work in there, which I quite enjoyed. <clears throat> now, vocally, what you get is um, a mixture of more clean and spoken elements, sort of tied um, tied to the uh, you know the ideas and concepts of the songs. But you also get some of the more um, brash and uh, aggressive parts as well, uh, which work out fairly well. You don't really get full-on death growling or anything here. It's more of a a strained sound in the vocals, which is interesting and it works for the music. Um, lyrically, there's a few weaknesses here. Like, there's a couple songs I thought could have had better lyrics. Like, uh, I thought Chaos Mind was a little too like rhymy and I don't know. It, it just could have been a little more interesting lyrically. But you know, there's a lot of good lyrical content on here too, so it's not like a major gripe or anything. <clears throat> One other thing I like to mention is that the the production here is generally consistent and well done. And there's only one exception to that rule here, which was uh, the vocals on the track Isolated. I really enjoy that song. Uh, it's epic. It has a lot of tension in it, but in the heavier parts, I, I found that the, the lyrics and vocals uh, were very drowned out. And uh, they're very well written, which made it even more unfortunate. So maybe that's something they'll you know improve on a little bit in the future, like uh, that sort of fine-tuning. But, you know, it's not a huge deal. It's still a very enjoyable album. <clears throat> So overall, I can say that, you know, this album here, Serotonal is Monumental, is an excellent release, uh, something you'll probably have to import from the UK, but I, I did that, and it was, uh, you know, very well worth it to me. It's an enjoyable release, it's a great return to the classic doom metal vibe for uh, Darren White here, and it's, uh, it's an introduction of many new concepts and ideas, too. So it, it keeps it fresh, it's not a clone of anything older, like the old Anathema stuff. And uh, it's overall a very enjoyable listen. Uh, sure, there are things they could improve on in the future, but you know that's generally the case with you know first full-length album from any band. So check it out, uh, Serotonal. Very underrated band. Maybe not a whole lot of publicity, especially here in North America, but uh, you know very enjoyable stuff. Thanks for watching and goodbye.